Hi, my name is Darren Mostyn and this episode is aimed for complete beginners in the colour page. This is an episode for absolute newbies on getting from the edit page into the colour page and understanding what's going on. So I'm not just going to show you what each menu does, I'm going to show you properly how to use the colour page. If you are experienced in the colour page, I suggest you do not watch this video. This is 30 minutes of your life you'll definitely want back. But I have had some requests, so I'm going to keep an eye on the stats and comments and see if it's something that people do want. So let's go and take a look. Okay, so we're currently sitting in the edit page in Resolve. So this is our completed edit. So we've got maybe, I don't know, 30 shots on video track one. And then there's a few cutaways on video track two. So we've got maybe 10 shots there. So we've probably got about 40 odd shots here to grade. Now the grade, it happens in the color page and the color page talks to the edit page. All these pages talk to each other. So if I go to the color page now, we're exactly on the shot that we were on in the edit page. There's our edit timeline here. You can see that quite clearly there. Video layer one, video layer two. So there's our cutaways there. So each of these little lines, these little icons is a video edit. So you go back to the edit page and let's put it onto this track here, this clip, sorry, back to the color page. And there we are, we're on the, exactly the same time code and the time code is here. So I can also move up and down the edits in the color page. So this is just a pictorial display of my edit page. I can't make edit changes in the color page. You can't actually grab a clip and move it. You have to go back to the edit page to do that. So if I wanted to just move this shot and maybe move this one over here, go back to the color page and that has happened. Okay, so you can't actually do any editing in the color page. Each of these edits here also has a picture icon above it. So this is every single shot in my edit. So I reckon there was about 40 or 50 shots. If I go to the end here, there is in fact 46 shots. So that's including video layer one and video layer two. There's 46 shots in total. So just bear in mind, all these pages talk to each other. You can go to the deliver page at any time. You can go to Fairlight and do your audio mixing. Uh, let's move that timeline now. And if I go to the color page, we're on exactly that same shot again. All right, so each of these talk to each other. It's really straightforward. So any edit changes happen in the edit page. And then when you want to grade it, go to the color page. So before we look at basic color grading, I'm just going to talk you through this whole interface. So the top left panel here is uh, currently the media pool. So that is exactly the same as the first page here. This is exactly what's going on in here. All these clips that are in here are shown in the color page here. Now you can't actually edit from here, remember. So if I want to use these clips, I have to go back to the edit page. And there you see the media pool there. It's just in a different view at the minute, so I can switch that back to picture view. And that is exactly the same as that. Um, so I don't actually need this. Um, so I can change it to be something else. So I can change it to be uh, LUTs. So we're not going to cover LUTs in this episode. Uh, I'm going to stick to just getting you going and understanding the color page. But these are essentially lookup tables that help us um, do color balancing if you want. But what I prefer to have is this thing called gallery. And what the gallery does, there's a few in there already, is it's a, it's a still, which is basically a grade. So I can use, I can save grades and I can use these to apply to other clips. So if I want to copy and paste grades, so for example, this shot here happens quite a few times in this sequence. So it's here and here. There's no point in me grading that individually two or three or four times. If I save a still, I can literally apply it to the shot. And we'll look at that in a moment. So this page here is the main viewer. So this is essentially what's on my output. So when I render the program, this is what I'm seeing. So if I don't color grade this shot and just leave it like that, that is what is exported. As soon as I make any changes in here, the colors, let me just do something. For example, if I just adjust the gamma, you see that changing in the viewer. And if you have an external monitor, you'll see exactly this image on that monitor. Down here, you've got the transport control. So I can play, stop, we can go back to the beginning. This one allows you to loop the clip. So I'm on this clip currently. And if I just keep playing it, it will just play in a loop. This is the sequence name. So this comes from the edit. So here is my sequence name. And you can select other sequences just by clicking on here. This is my time code. So my current um, time code of the clip. And we've got a few other tools here that we'll look at. This one is essentially for trying to match shots. So it's a wipe. Uh, so if I double click this shot here, you'll see that I can literally wipe between the two. So I'm comparing side by side. I can switch that on and off here. Okay, this one is a side by side view. Um, I probably won't look at that in this particular episode. And this one's our highlights, which we will look at a bit later. This icon here allows you to enable and disable the grade. So if I just put 
another grade on, I can literally enable and disable it. So it's bypass, I'll just reset that. And then on this side here, we've got the node tree. So a node is, think of it like a layer. Um, so you always have one node to start with. This green dot here represents my original material. So this is the ungraded material. And this represents the output, i.e. what I'm seeing on here. And everything that happens in between is how we build up a grade. So we're gonna look at that in some detail. So that's the node tree. We can switch all these on and off up here. So if I want to get rid of these clips here, I can just click on here and get rid of those. If I want to get rid of the timeline, which is our edit timeline, we can click on here. This is where we change from media pool to gallery to LUTs. So it's quite easy to open and close some of these panels depending on whether you're working on a laptop or whether you've got the dual screens or whatever, you can lay it out pretty well. Open effects is a whole load of plugins that allow us to do special effects. So they're really quite specific and I might show you those. I'll, I'll see how long this takes to record. Um, and here we have a thing called Lightbox, which is basically all these icons here, all these scenes, and you just view them like this. So instead of viewing the timeline, we've literally got shot one, shot two, shot three. And it's a really easy way to just have a quick general look at your footage and your edit. There's some quite useful little tricks with it. Okay, so down here, as we've mentioned, this is all our clips. Okay, if you want to see how many clips you've got, you can also click this little I button here and that gives you information. So I can see here we've got 46 clips. So before I start a grading session, I normally press this I button, the, the information button, and have a look at how many clips I've got to work with. For example, if I'm grading documentary stuff, you might have 800 to 1,000 clips quite easily. So if I've got two days to grade that, I know that I've got to grade 400 shots a day. So that's quite useful. Just have a look at how much work you've got to do. Uh, you switch that off by just changing the mode. So this one is our scopes. I've done a whole episode on scopes, so have a watch of that if you're not clear how to use scopes. But you can basically select from here which one you want to work with. I normally leave it on waveform just as a general, just while I'm sort of generally starting. And this one here is keyframing. And we're not going to do keyframing today, but that keyframe allows you to um, start the shot with one look and finish it with a, with a different look. So you can literally do a, a dynamic grade. So you could go from, uh, let's say you're moving from, you want it to look like a sunrise, for example, you could have it quite dark at the beginning and then go sort of nice and warm towards the end, just using keyframes. So I normally just leave the waveform up there. Okay, so down in this section is our main grading tool. So this is the tools that we've got to perform the grade. And when we make any adjustment to these tools, the information, whatever we do, is saved onto the node. Okay, so if I now just, um, if we go to here, have a look at saturation. So if I lift the saturation up, and on here you just literally put your mouse on the number and just move from left to right. If you want to reset that, just double click the word. So here you can see the saturation moving up, and now you see on the node itself, let me just make that a little bit bigger, you see on the node itself that we have a little icon, and that is telling me that we've done a primary color correction. So we have here primaries. So a primary color correction is basically you're affecting the whole shot. And over here, we have our secondary color correction. So this is where you can isolate a portion of the shot or a section or a particular color, and you're grading just that region. So we'll have a look at both those. But basically, you start off with a primary. You want to get your shot into a good place. We'll do that in a moment. So if I just reset that, so the little circles here is a reset. So anywhere you see that is a reset sign. So just reset that. And that's now my node has nothing on it, which means we're still seeing the original image. So that's my first node. So the first node, uh, what I do is I use that to get a good balance. So let's just take a look at, let's start on this guy here. So it's the main issue. So you can start anywhere you want. I mean, you don't have to grade from the beginning. Normally I do grade from the beginning, but you don't have to. Um, so, oh, do you know what? Let's grade from the beginning. Why not? Okay, so let's take this shot here, and it's got a dissolve on it, so that dissolve is being honoured. If we go to the edit page, we'll probably see that. Yeah, so you can see that happening there, so it's, the dissolve is coming from here. So it's talking directly to the colour page. So that's another good rule as well, is when you're going to grade a shot, is don't just go to the shot and start grading, because the camera might even move around. It could be, uh, you could be grading this dog, and then it's out of shot in a few frames, and then you realize that you should be grading this guy. So just always have a quick look through the shot. 
so you know what you've got to work with. So that's a, just a good rule. Don't always just go from the first frame. I'm going to find a suitable point in the shot to use as my reference point. So let's just do it with the dog's eyes open. And we're going to start grading. So the primary wheels is a good place to start. So primary wheels or primary bars, it's the same thing, uh, is split into four regions. Okay, so lift is uh, the darker areas, gamma is your mid-tones, and gain is your highlights. So it's so it's the darker areas. So if I adjust this wheel here, I'm, I'm adjusting more in the darker regions than I am in the lighter regions. If I adjust this one here, I'm adjusting just more of the mid-tones. Okay, but obviously mid-tones become shadows as well and cover highlights, but not as strong as each individual wheel. And then here, I'm really lifting up the highlights. And you can see that on the scopes here. So if I adjust, if I adjust this, you'll see just the top, more of the top half of the scope is moving than if I use the lift. So I'm going to reset that. And the first thing I do is use this one called offset. And what offset does is it, it's not shadows, midtones, or highlights. It's the entire image. So it's really your exposure. So again, I just make, I just get the image set to somewhere comfortable. So I'm looking at the scopes here and I'm trying to get it just roughly in the middle there. And then I'm going to make adjustments to the lift. So I'm just going to bring down my shadows. And again, have a look at my episode on scopes if you want to know how to read these, but I'm basically just setting it above zero. Uh, if I go below zero, the image starts to get crushed. So you can see I'm losing detail in the blacks there. Let's bring that back up. Let's look at our gain. Again, I don't want to go all the way up, but somewhere around there. And I'll just have a look at my gamma. And I'm going to put a bit of saturation in. So I'm happy with that for the moment. And what I'm going to do is just label that on my node here. So if you right hand click and say node label, and I'll just call that base grade. So I'm going to add another node now, and I'll show you why I'm doing that. So I'm going to right hand click on here, say add node, and say add serial, or you can press Alt S. Now the reason I'm doing that is because I can do anything I want now. I'm just randomly moving all this around. And if you basically make a bit of a mess of that, like I have done here, I can right hand click on that node, reset, and I've still got my nice base grade um, locked. So this layer, I can do whatever I want to, and I can always go back to this layer here. So I, I'm kind of using the node here as a, as a full stop, if you like. So I've done my base grade, happy with that just move on to the next node before I've even thought about what I'm going to do. So um, as soon as I stop and I'm happy with a look, I normally just add another node so that if I do something and it looks worse, I can always go back to where I was. Think of it like layers in Photoshop. It's a little bit like that. Okay, so I'm just going to right click and reset that node. What I'm going to do now is look at, so far we've looked at luminance. So we've looked at uh, lift, gamma gain, luminance and offset. But I want to start adjusting the colors now. So on these color wheels, we can adjust uh, just color in the shadows, just color in the midtones, and just color in the highlights. And you see here this dog, the, the blacks look a little bit blue to me. So I'm just going to warm those up. So I'm going to go to my lift and just push it towards red. Now you don't have to push a lot. I've hardly moved that and you see that's changed quite a fair bit there. So let me just push it a little bit more that way. So this is where it's good to have a panel, uh, one of the uh, resolve panels or a tangent panel. And it allows you with the balls and the wheels that you see on those panels, this is what I'm doing. So the balls basically move this and the wheels are just the brightness. So they are really useful because it's quite hard to get precise with the mouse. But when you're just learning, this is absolutely fine. So if I want to just warm up the highlights, i just push up here. Okay, a little bit more saturation. So I'm adding saturation on top of saturation. That's fine. These are serial nodes. So basically what happens here gets taken over to this second node and we then add some more grade. So this line here, this is remember our source. This is the original shot goes into here. The green dot is RGB in, is the, is the video signal input. Then the video signal comes out of this node with its color grade and goes into the second node. And we go out of the second node to the output. Okay, so this, this grade plus this grade equals the output. And again, you can just move these around as you like. So you can see that slight adjustment that we did has made a big difference. Now, I'm not going to make a new node just yet because I've not quite finished on here. And what I'm going to do is add a little bit of contrast. So down here, you've got these number one and number two. That means there's two menus. And these are our main primary adjustment tools down here uh, beyond the wheels. So on tab number one, you've got contrast. And so if I adjust that, it, adjust, it increases the contrast or decrease the contrast, which is where you want to go. And the pivot works with the contrast. So as I adjust the pivot, I'm adjusting the point at which contrast occurs. Okay, next to that is saturation, as you've already seen. Um, hue is obviously going to change the entire color. So it's actually shifting the color. 
So use that one carefully. Uh, this is a good one to use for slightly adjusting skin tones. Lumamix, I've done a whole episode on Lumamix, so have a watch of that and that explains that pretty clearly. But don't worry about this stuff when you're just starting. Second tab, color temperature. So this is a really easy way of warming up or cooling down an entire shot. Tint is basically uh, adjusting between green and magenta. So again, another useful one for skin tones. If you've got quite green looking skin tones, you can normally just tweak it by adjusting the tint. Again, double click the word to reset. Midtone detail is basically good for sharpening or softening skin. So it's a soften and sharpen, but a little bit more subtle than that. Color boost is a kind of saturation, uh, but it's working in a slightly different way. And we've got shadow and highlights. So these are great for recovering blown out highlights. If you've got highlights, if you've shot the sky and your clouds are really overexposed, by pulling down highlights, you can often retrieve that information. And you can see on my waveform, it's just lifting the very tops down. Same with shadows. If you've got uh, crushed shadows, you can lift them up here and hopefully recover a bit of detail. It depends how well you've shot the um, footage to start with. Okay, so that's, that's those uh, primary controls. Plus, we've got the color wheels and the balance. So that's, this is our main area that I work in when I'm starting a grade. And so just for clarity here, I would normally start my grades with a color space transform. Um, some people use LUTs, but I really don't want to go into that in this beginner's tutorial. I think once you've got a grasp of these tools, you can start progressing onto that stuff. But there's no reason to use them. You can work perfectly happily with just these tools. And you can see already we're getting a good result out of that. Uh, if I bypass that, that's where we started. And we're now there already. So I've not even touched LUTs or anything like that. So I think just learn the controls first and you'll be fine. So the primary wheels we've now covered. There are other tools in here. I'm not gonna go through each of these because when you're just starting out, you don't need to use those just yet. Um, but there is another important one and that's the curves. So over here, I've got uh, curves. We've got keying, windows. We're gonna go through these. But here in my curves, is another way of grading. And I use both. Some people just like working in the curves. Some people just use the wheels. I tend to use both. So let's just add another serial node and look at what's going on here. So this is our shadows and this is our highlights. And what we can do is just pull the curve and you see we're making adjustments to the darker regions and adjustments to the lighter regions here. And this is our sort of mid tones. So it's exactly the same sort of thing as the three wheels. You're just doing it on a curve. There are other tools in the curves that are very specific. And one of them is actually isolating a channel. So these are currently ganged together, but we could just say, if we want to take a bit of red out, we could just click on the red channel only. And we're now just adjusting reds. So that's another way of working with that. So it's just another way of grading. It's, a, it's another tool that you can grade with. If you want to link them all back again, click on there and you're off. Now in the curves, there are, you see these dots here. This means that there's multiple curve menus. And if we pull down here, you can see we've got all these different ones as well. And each one of these behaves slightly different. So for example, hue versus saturation, if I click on here, you get this graph comes up. Let's say you want to make the red here a little less saturated. If you click on it, you get a point appear here and you can literally pull down and you can see the red just getting it a little bit less saturated. So this is a secondary correction that I'm making now. So I'm just gonna pull that down a little bit. And there, that's done. So I've done that on a separate node. If I don't like it, we can switch that node off even. If you just click on the number, it'll just switch it off. That's where we were. And that's where we are now. So we've got our main curve. If we go back to that here, there's our main curve. And we've done that little red desaturation. So remember, a primary grade is when you're affecting the whole shot, and a secondary grade is when you're isolating an area. So we've just done a secondary grade by isolating the red using the curves and desaturating it. So that's a secondary grade. Now, I might choose at this point to just add another serial node so I can save that moment in time. So let's add another serial. And the other thing I could do is I could save this look so far as a still. So if I right-hand click in the viewer and say grab still, what it does, it grabs a thumbnail of my node tree. So this thumbnail here contains these four nodes. And in fact, if I right click on it and say display node graph, there's the nodes sitting inside. And we can use that to our advantage. If we go to this shot here, what we can do is just drag this still onto here. And that has applied the grade. So we've now got this shot and this shot. So it's just copied the grade over. Let me just make the node tree a bit clearer for you. And you see, we've even got the labels that we put on it. So that's just a really nice quick way of copying grades, but it also means I'm saving a version. So I'm saving a version of the grade. So if we go back to this shot. So let's just say we want to take contrast down a little bit. 
then what we can do is compare this look to the look we've just done. So if I double click this, this brings up our image wipe and you can now see that's with a slightly more contrast and that's with less. And you can choose which one you want. So if you prefer it more contrasty, which I think I do in this one, we can either take that node off or we can just copy this node. So it's probably easier for me to take that node off. So I can right hand click and reset. And we're back to the contrasty look. If you've got a little bit of an edge there, just switch the wipe off here. So hopefully this is starting to make sense now. We've got our timeline, remember? This is our individual edits. We can go to any shot we want and grade it in any order we want. And we've got our uh, four nodes here. So we're building up serial nodes really easily. So we've got our level going in and it's coming out of this one into this one. And then these two looks are feeding into the third node. And then this is feeding into the fourth node, which currently has nothing on it. It's just an empty node. Uh, if you press Command D, you can disable a single node. So if we want to see what it's like without this, we can do that. And we can Command D and do that just to check that you're happy with what each node is doing. And we could have done all these moves that we've made, all these grades, could have all happened on one node. But just to give you that flexibility, I advise that you do it on separate nodes. And it doesn't matter how many nodes you build up. So just to show you, if I go back to the edit page, there's our shot, but it's now graded. So we're sitting on shot two in the edit. The other edits aren't graded yet, but this one is now graded. And we can bypass the grade even in the edit page by clicking up here. Okay, so that's just to show you that the pages are talking to each other. So I can go to color. If I want to make an edit in here, I can click in here, make that shot shorter. Back to the color page, that's now shorter. You can't tell here that it's shorter, but you can here. Okay, let's have a look at some of the other tools available. So I'm gonna go onto my fourth node. Remember we reset this, so there's nothing on there so far. And the next tool along here in our secondaries is a qualifier. So what this does is allow us to key at a certain color to allow us to isolate it to grade it so i've graded a shot further on down the timeline uh here so i've just done a base grade on that which is what we've done so far i'm on a second clean node and basically what i can do is use this now to sample one of the colors so we might want to sample his skin tone for example so we just take the qualifier from here and just sample his skin and there you see it's just grabbed the skin tone. Now I need to do a lot of work on this key to get it right. So basically you start playing with these tools here, um, but I'm not gonna do that in this tutorial. It's just to show you what the tool is doing. Now this gray area here is to show me what won't be affected. So you can switch that on and off here, it's called highlights. And so only the areas that you can see the color of are what will be affected. And so let me show you if I take that off now. And if we adjust hue, which is back here, you see that we're changing the skin tone, just only what we've sampled on that key. Okay, so the cleaner the key, the more natural it's gonna look. If you've got a bad key like we've got here, there's a lot of extra things being picked up in that. They're all gonna be affected as well. So just be careful. You need to play around with these settings. I might do a tutorial on how to do good keying, but it, it's uh, you just need to practice in here really. Okay, so let's just reset that one. The one next to it is a power window. Now these are great. So if you want to isolate an area, so again, that becomes a secondary, then you can use these tools and you've got different shapes and the common ones are probably circle. So here you can change the shape of it. And the outside one is softness. So you've got a soft edge. So if we put that on him here, then we could lighten him up maybe. And you see that's happening just inside the window. It's not affecting any of the other parts of the shot. And if we invert that window, so we turn it inside out by clicking here, then it does the opposite. So whatever we're doing here is not affected by the window. So these power windows are really useful. So that puts a sort of darker shape around him, which brings him more into focus. And so this tool here allows you to just isolate a certain area. So if I switch this one off, what we can do now is just draw a shape around our character. And once I close that, then that becomes effective. Let's put some softness on it. Always put softness on these windows. It's always good to put softness on. And then just invert it. And now we've just drawn our own shape and darkened just the edges. Okay, so the next tool is a tracking tool. And this works with windows. So you basically have to have a window first and then you track it. So let's find, this shot doesn't actually move much. So let me find another shot. Uh, this one here moves. Yeah, so let's imagine we've done our first grade. In fact, let's just copy this grade onto here and see how well it copies across. So if I middle mouse click, I keep this one highlighted in red. 
If I middle mouse click this one, this is a really good technique. It literally copies the grade over. Now what I want to do is get rid of that window. So I'm going to reset that. And we've got not a bad start there. Um, so let's take our pen tool here. I'm just going to draw around his head. Now obviously he moves. So that's not going to be very good. So what I'm going to do is go to the tracker and press track forward. You can track backwards or forwards and just literally press go and that will follow his head. So what we can do now is still affect just his face or just his head, but even though he's moving, it doesn't matter. So just to be extreme, if I just line it up, that's done now. So if I go back to the beginning and press play again, that's following. So the tracker is really powerful in here. I'm just going to reset that because it doesn't look very nice. Okay, the next one in here is blur and sharpen. So you've got blur, sharpen and mist. So in fact, if you stay on the blur tool, if you move up, it will blur. And if you move down, it sharpens. So you don't it really need to go through the other tools if you don't want to. So again, these work with windows. So if I put a window, let's say you want to blur out his face. Then you can put the window on it and then go to here and the blur happens just inside the window. And if you want to see the window, if you click here, you can actually see the power window. So that's what that tool does. Let's reset that again. This one I'm not going to explain in this tutorial. This one here is sizing. So if you want to do any pan, zooming, etc., you can do that in here. You can also do that in the edit page using the transforms. So if I'm on this shot here, Go to your inspector and you've got zoom and positioning here. So it's, it's pretty much the same tool. So we're kind of getting there now. Let's go back to our dog because we've got the most nodes on there. You can see how we've built up this grade pretty well. I'm just going to show you one last thing. Um, so if I go to this here, open effects, and what these are are real special effects. Each one is doing a very different job. And if you just scroll down, there's loads of stuff in here that does sort of crazy stuff. Um, I've done a few tutorials on some of this stuff before, but for example, here you've got de-flicker, if you've got flickering issues, sharpening, um, there is lens flares and glows and things like that. So if you wanted to just put a special effect on there, we can just go ahead and put a lens flare on. And you just drag and drop it onto the node and there it is. And I can reposition that wherever I want it to be. So that is what these open effects are. They're very particular plugins that give you just that little bit extra edge in your grade. So I just thought I'd show you that, but don't worry too much about that when you're just starting out. Remember, as soon as you've finished, you can go to the deliver page and export and all your grades are there. So you just literally deliver it out. Now, obviously we're only scratching at the surface of what the color page can do. It is incredibly advanced tool, but I was hoping that just gives you a good overview and a deeper understanding of the layout and how everything kind of works together. So once you're comfortable with this level, take a look at my other tutorials where I go into much more depth about specific areas.